joy in the city joy in your life joy in your family and joy everywhere in jesus name gck authority has announced the next level move from the land of honor and integrity comes two in one gck live in Ekiti State, Southwest Nigeria, the Global Crusade and Retreat, December 22 to 27, 2022. A new level of Impact Academy for Youth, Young Adults and Professionals, titled Recharge to Excel, December 27, 2022, at 0600 hours GMT, all broadcasts live on satellite, radio, television, and all our social media platforms with Jonathan White, our guest music minister. GCK, the gospel to every creature. We bless your father for this morning. We thank you, Lord, because of your greatness in our lives. Thank you, Lord, because of the power of your world and what Jesus Christ came to do in the world. We praise your name because of your grace, wonderful grace, abundant grace. Father, we thank you for those that have known you already. We are blessing you, God, for those that will know you this morning. We ask you, Lord, that even this world this morning, you will speak to us in Jesus' name. Somebody is knocking at your door. The Lamb of God that carried away the saints of the world. I'm asking this morning, O oh Lord, that the saints of people here will be poured, and God's lives will be changed in Jesus' name. Speak to us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We consider the message this morning, Behold the Lamb. In John chapter 1, from verse 29, John chapter 1, verse 29, the next day, John sweat Jesus, coming unto him, and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he, whom I say, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. In verse 35, again the next day, after John stood, and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, and saw them following, and said unto them, What seek ye? Then said unto him, Reba, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He said unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. When we talk about the lamb, what does the lamb connotes? One, the lamb connotes sacrifice. When you read the Bible, right from the beginning of the Bible to the end, you find out that the lamb connotes sacrifice. In the Jewish days, the lamb was used for sacrifice. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 7 to 8, Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac. And on the way, Isaac asked his father, Daddy, we have all things ready, but where is the lamb for sacrifice? And Abraham, his father, answered him. He told him that the Lord would provide a lamb for his sacrifice. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. You can read that in Revelations chapter 5, from verse 6. Revelations chapter 5, from verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, to the Lamb, Lamb held in capital, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the bull out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the bull, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, 
having every one of them up and golden fires full of odors, which are the prayers of saints, and the song a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to go by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Amen. Jesus Christ died. He shed his blood to save the nation, to save the world. Jesus is the Lamb of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Put out therefore the whole level that ye may be a new lamb, as ye are unleavened for even Christ. I pass over a sacrifice for all. Christ, I pass over a sacrifice for us. So then we know, number one, lamb connotes sacrifice. Jesus Christ died for the saints of the world, yours inclusive. He died for you. And that is why this morning, he will make a call unto your soul. And if you heal their call, you will be saved. It shall be so. In the name of Jesus Christ. But then the Lamb knows humility. It describes the nature of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was holy. Jesus Christ was lowly in heart and gentle. He was all resisting because when death came coming, calling for him to sacrifice himself for the world, Jesus Christ yielded himself to die for the world. That's why today, by the grace of God, we are here. We are born again, many of us, by the grace of God. And if you are not born again, why not today? Jesus Christ, take it away, the sins of the world. By the blood of atonement, by the blood of a sacrifice. Jesus was all resisting all the time. He surrendered his will on to the Father. That means that if we say we are born again, and we are resisting, we are resisting the law. We are not giving to the law. We are not doing anything good. We must give a life to Jesus Christ. But then, we know Jesus is the Lamb. What should we do to know have Jesus in our life? Something happens in number. In the days of the children of Israel, they were in the wilderness. And something happened. They sinned against the Lord. Look at it. Numbers chapter 21 and verse 4. Numbers chapter 21, verse 4. And they joined him from Mount Hall by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was more discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore, have ye brought us all out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul looked at this light bread. And the Lord sent fear disappears among the people, and they beat the people, and more people of Israel died. Stop there. They sinned against God. And God was angry against their sin. As a result, God sent fear disappears to them, and many of them died. Many of them died. In the same way you are dead in sin today. Sinners is dead in trespasses and sin. It doesn't really matter. What he thinks he is, it doesn't really matter. What he thinks he is, sinners, he is dead in trespasses and sin. And as they come to the Lord Jesus Christ, he cannot be saved. He cannot be made alive. It is the blood of atonement. It is by the of Jesus Christ that we can become born again. The people die. Then what happened? They cried against God. Verse 7, therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. For we have spoken against the law, and against thee pray unto the Lord, that he take away the serpent from us. And Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said unto Moses, Thank God. God is ever merciful. God is ever merciful. God told Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon the pole, and it shall come to pass, that everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And what did they do? Verse 9. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon the pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. You will live this morning. You will live this morning. That was what happened. They sinned against God, but they knew what to do. They cried to God. Through Moses. And what happened? God told him, make a fiery serpent. 
and hug it upon the pole. It's a call to power. Immediately, the servant by the people. For the apple, if they look up unto the servant, you are hanging on the pole. Immediately, they shall live. Little did Moses know that what that was a time of Christ. That in years to come, that Jesus Christ will be hung on the cross. And that at any point in time from that time of war, if people could look unto Jesus Christ, they will be saved. And that is what we have today. That is what we enjoy in God today. If you look to Jesus today, if you behold the Lord Jesus today, you shall be saved. He never disappointed anybody. He never disappointed a sincere seeker. If you look for him today, if you seek him today, if you behold the Lord today, you shall be saved. Don't join the group of many people that you their inside and foster in the wrong way. They look at the wrong thing. They look at unprofitable thing. And so they, lo they lost. You will not lose this money. All you need to do is to look to Jesus Christ and you will be saved. What you see and concentrate on, concentrate on will ultimately become part and parcel of our life. You see Jesus Christ today, Jesus will become part and parcel of your life. The fear is happened, he is the type of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so. But the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you look at him this morning, you will have everlasting time, everlasting life. After all, many of us have looked for the Savior years gone by and recently, and we live. You will live this morning. This morning we con consider three points. Number one, that Christ is the Lamb. That's what we can see from our text. From that text, we can infer one, that Christ is the Lamb of God. We beskiss him of great sacrifice by which atonement is made for sin. And man reconciled to God. Christ was the Paschal Lamb. Our Passover. Christ is the Paschal Lamb. Our Passover. Number two. That Christ was the Lamb of God. Who took away the sins of the world. Number three. That it is our duty. That it is our duty to behold the Lamb of God. Jesus is the fine fulfillment of all the land that was slain in Israel for sin. But now, Terry, I've told you that Jesus Christ and that it is our duty to behold the Lamb of God. You behold the Lamb this morning and the Lord will deliver you. Behold the Lamb of God. I need to tell you this, that Christ is the solution to all problems of the world. Sin is possessing life. Look unto him, he says, and be saved for the ends of of the year, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22. Isaiah 45, verse 22. Look unto me, and ye say, All the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, there is no air. If you look at God this morning, you will be saved in Jesus' name. Number one, we consider more about the Lamb. You need to know more about the Lamb. Jesus Christ. The author of life, the finisher of a faith. You need to know about Jesus Christ. Number two, ministry of the Lamb. And number three, man's response to the Lamb's sacrifice. Number one, more about the Lamb. Jesus Christ. I'm happy to tell you this. That Jesus Christ is everything to every man. Amen. Jesus Christ is everything to every man. To a grand sinner, Jesus is a rescuer. He will rescue him. Jesus is everything to every man. One, Jesus Christ is the bread of life. Are you satisfied with life? In fact, are you getting this talk about the happenings in life? Here is Jesus Christ, the bread of life. When you eat him, you never hunger again. John chapter 6, verse 35. Jesus is the bread of life. John chapter 6, verse 35. And Jesus said unto him, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me, to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never tell. In verse 48, the same thing, I am the bread of life. If you come to Jesus Christ, you will never hunger again. Righteousness will be yours. Heaven will be yours. When people are dissatisfied with life, when they are tired of life, and people are trying to take their life to commit suicide, Jesus Christ will be not for you. In Jesus is our satisfaction. You come to Christ this morning, you will be satisfied. But then, Jesus is the living water. Jesus is the living water. Isaiah chapter 41. 
Jesus is the living water. Isaiah chapter 41 in verse 17. 41 of Isaiah chapter verse 17. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is no, and their tongue faileth for death. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. That is Jesus Christ. He said, I will hear you. Are you thirsty? Are you running out, out of water in your life? Your life is dry. Your life is terrible. In fact, you are fed up with life. Jesus Christ said, you are poor. You are looking for water. You have been looking for salvation for a long time ago. But he said, I, the Lord, will not forsake them. Verse 18, I will open rivers in high places. And fountains in the midst of the valley. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and a dry land spring of water. Jesus is the living water. Your life is dry. Of course, it must be dry. If you are insane, if your life is dry, come to Jesus today. He will give you the living water. Christians, pilgrims on this highway to heaven, are you tired of life? Jesus Christ is the living water. Come to him this morning. You know what will happen. You heard in this morning. Things will change for your life in Jesus' name. Good news, the gospel. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the Savior of the world. If you look to Jesus Christ, you will be saved. I pray to you, as I forty-five twenty-two. look unto me, and be ye saved. All the ends of the world. That is the command. If you look at Jesus Christ, you will be saved. Simple. It's just natural. But if you do not look at him, you will not be saved. You know, many people look at themselves. They look at themselves. Some people say, I am poor. I won't serve God now. I don't have time for religion now. I will pursue money to his logical end. They will never be saved. Some people say, I am ugly. How did God create me like this? They will never learn to look at Jesus Christ. They will never be saved. They don't know that there is beauty in salvation. Is that so? Of course, yes. You get born again, you see the beauty of God radiating in your life. But then, some people will refuse to get born again to look at Jesus Christ because of what? They are looking at their prosperity, their wealth. Those will not be saved. Some look at their position. I am a professor. I am a lecturer. I am the, I am reading engineering. My father is this. My mother is that. They will never be born again. They look at their words. They look at their position. They will never be born again. These are things that we know there. And lady will look at us and say, how wonderful. God created me wonderfully. How wonderful. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. I cannot serve God now. You'll never be born again. But if you look at Jesus Christ the Savior this morning and you forget about your beauty and forget about your handsomeness and forget about your position in the society, then you'll be born again. Let me tell you, before God, every sinner is a wretched man. He's a wretched woman. There is no beautiful sinner before God. Every sinner is wretched. He's only the Savior. He needs to be old. He needs to be old to get born again. Jesus is the Savior of the world. John chapter 10, verse 10. John 10, 10. Jesus is the Savior of the world. And he came to say, if you today could just reach out to Jesus Christ and behold him, you will be born again. John 10, 10. The thief cometh not. But to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus has come to give life and to give it more abundantly. And Jesus Christ is the sanctifier. He suffered without the gate. Hebrews 11 12. So that I can sanctify you. Today, you can see the cleanness of life. Today, you can receive the beauty of life. If you can reach forth to the Lord Jesus Christ, I told you that Jesus is all to all men. Jesus is everything to every man. If today you can look into the eyes of Jesus Christ, you will be sanctified. Jesus is a sanctifier. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Look at where Jesus Christ suffered so that you and me can be sanctified. Pay the price. You must come to Jesus. We are for Jesus also. That he might sanctify the people with them with his own blood, suffered without the gate. More about the land. He is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Matthew 3 11. John the Baptist told the people, Somebody is coming behind me. The soul that I am unworthy to know he is the one that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That Jesus Christ. Look to me today. Many people are born again years gone by. They have never, they have never been baptized the Holy Ghost today. You look to Jesus Christ. You don't look at your own incapacitation. If you look to Jesus Christ, you will be 
You will be battered in the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the door of heaven. In John chapter 10, you can read about that. He is the door to the kingdom of God. He has given us a name. Two ways we can be saved. There is no other name under heaven where we man can be saved. It's through the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the door to the kingdom of God. Want to be born again? Look at Jesus this morning. And Jesus Christ will take you in through that door. And Jesus is our great physician. Jesus is our healer. In Exodus 15, 26, he says, I am the Lord that he led thee. He's the healer. He's the healer. Look at Jesus Christ. Some people prefer to look at individuals. Some people prefer to look at great prophets. Some people prefer to look at some other people. But what am I saying? Look at Jesus Christ. Christ is the healer. I am the Lord that he led thee. He suffered in Isaiah 53. By his, uh, by his trial, we are here. He suffered for him. If you are sick this morning, any type of sickness, and you look toward Jesus Christ, you will be delivered. And Jesus is the deliverer. New chapter 1 and verse 7. Jesus is the deliverer. Nahum chapter 1 in verse 7. Let's read together. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and in no day that trust him. Jesus is his great deliverer. He will deliver you. What is the affliction in your life? He will deliver you. Problem of academics, problem of the family, problem anywhere, Jesus will deliver you. Some people say you never do good in life. Forget it. Here, there is a solution. Jesus Christ will deliver you. When you go back, they will see the glory of God in your life in Jesus' name. And Jesus is the Son of God. He asked the disciple, what did people say the Son of Man is? And Peter answered him, you are Christ, the Son of God. He said, Peter, blessed are thou. Evil spirit has not revealed this thing to you. Not even my human being. It is God of heaven that revealed it to you. Jesus is the Son of God. He is the eternal King. From the beginning, he was here. Now he's here. He's here for eternity. He is our eternal king. You can read that in Proverbs chapter 8, 22 to 30. He is the eternal king. In Micah 5, 2, you read about it. Jesus is the eternal king. He is the truth. He is the lie. He is the way. Don't let people deceive you. There's no other way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. You listen to some people in the town. They tell you that they are Jesus Christ. Some people even speak blessing in that Jesus Christ is their son. That is rubbish. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. Jesus is the way. If you look for him this morning, you will be born again. You will be delivered. And Jesus is the light of the world. In John 8, 12, he says, John 9, 5, he says, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. No wonder. It is only the Christian that can live the life that the world will have. It is only the Christian that can live the life that God will have. Because as long as you are in Christ, you are in the light of Christ. If you are not in Christ, you are in complete darkness. In fact, you don't know what your stomach near. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. He is the great counselor. Many counsel today are wrong counsel. I read something sometimes ago. Somebody was having a problem in his family. And he saw his friend. He said, I have a problem in my family. What do you expect me? What, what do you want me to do? Can you tell me? That person said, why don't you try affairs? Then, when he went home, you know, the people, that person spoke to his wife. He said, I discussed with my friend. Somebody told me that for a family to move on, I must try affairs. And the wife said, I have tried it. It never worked. It will never work. Because that is the wrong counsel. Jesus Christ is the great counselor. If you, you have a problem in your life and you reach forth to him, he will counsel you. He will order your life. He will order your footsteps. Jesus is the great counselor. Look to him and things will change in your life. He is the prince of peace. Jesus is the creator. Jesus Christ is the chief shepherd. And Jesus is the hope of glory. Are you Dancas? Jesus is the hope of glory. More about the Savior. Jesus is our great high priest. Is our intercession. And Jesus Christ is the fine. In John chapter 15, you read it there in first one. I am the fine. We are the branches. If you are not the part of the branch today, why don't you come? Why don't you come to Jesus Christ? And it will make you part of the fine. Jesus is the great door. He will judge the world in righteousness. I must tell you. I will not forget to tell you that Jesus Christ is going to judge this world in righteousness. Act of Apostle, chapter 17. In first 31, Act of Apostle. 731, because he has appointed the day in glory in which 
Sorry, because they are appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he have ordained, Jesus Christ. Whereof he has given assurance unto all men, and that he has raised him from the dead. Jesus Christ is the great job. If you refuse Christ, we will make what I call, we will tell you that you should desire for Jesus Christ, but if you refuse him, you can't refuse Christ forever. If you refuse him or her, you don't want to hear his voice here or her, you will hear his voice in heaven, and you will go to hellfire. Jesus is the great door. He's going to judge the world. Whether people believe it or not, it doesn't really matter. Jesus Christ is going to judge the world. He's going to judge the sins of the world. If today you can let yourself go up to heaven before you, things will change for you. Because there are sins of some people that follow them to judgment. Some, they go before them. Allow yourself to go out today. And you will be born again. And Jesus Christ will not judge you in the end time. The Bible says that for our God is a consuming fire. God is a loving God, but is a consuming fire. If you play with him, if you disdain him, God will forget you in red fire. The hands of the unrighteous will be put into hell, and all nations will forget God. Today, if you come to Christ, you will not be God, and Christ is the coming king. Christ is our rewarder. If you look to him, he will reward you. In Revelation 22, tell him, in verse 12 and 20, he is coming quickly. His reward is with him, and if you serve him, he will reward you. Christ, my savior. Christ, my friend, Christ, my treasure without end. Christ, when, when waves of sorrow will, of, of sorrow roll, Christ, the comfort of my soul. Christ, when all around, should fail. Christ, when enemies prevail. Christ, when false accusers rise. Christ, my soul is in the sky. Christ, when days are dark and drear. Christ, when all around is clear. Christ, when all the earth is gone. Christ, my portion on the throne. Christ at home and Christ abroad. Christ, my company on the road. Christ in sickness, Christ in health. Christ in poverty and Christ in wealth. Christ who walks on earth as strong. Christ, the blessed Son of God. Christ for time and Christ for age. Christ for all eternity. You need to know Christ. You need to know Christ. In John chapter 17, verse 13, and this is life eternal. That they might know you, the tr only true God, and Jesus Christ, that thou hast sent, whom thou hast sent. No Christ today. When you know Christ today, things will change for your life. No Christ today. If you behold it today, life will change for you. You will just post out and sing in praises to God, and your life will change. No Christ today. All must see Christ. Because life without Christ is crisis. See Christ today. And things will change in your life in Jesus' name. That leads me to my second point. Ministry of the Lamb. Ministry of the Lamb. In John chapter 1, verse 29. Let's look at the ministry of the Lamb. John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day. Don't see us, Jesus coming unto him. And see behold the Lamb of God. We take it away the sins of the world. That is the ministry of the world. To do what? Taking away the sins of of the world in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Luke 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. What is the ministry? To save those which are lost. In chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus Christ came to deliver. In Luke chapter 4, and in verse 18, He came to save, He came to deliver, He came to set free. In Luke chapter 4, and in verse 18. Let's read together. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because they have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recover, recover your sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bull, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Ministry of the Lord, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And I tell you, this is the acceptable time. Now you who come to the Lord Jesus Christ, He came to pray. You are blind, He came to restore life, to restore sight unto you. You are there, He came to restore life unto you. That is the ministry of the Lamb. When John 10, 10, He has told us, the thief cometh not, but to steal, to squander, to destroy. But I am come so that they can have life, and to have it more abundantly. Act of Apostle, chapter 10, verse 38, Act Chapter 10, verse 38. Have God another Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing good, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. That is the ministry of the Lamb. 
healing poor people, deliverer for everybody. Jesus Christ, and not God, another name to go about bingo in Matthew chapter 11, in verse 28. Matthew 11 28, ministry of the Lamb. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, come unto me. All that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, and I am, for I am meek and lowly in her, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my body is light. Why don't you come to Jesus this morning? That yoke in your life will kill you. That yoke in your life will destroy you. But if you can come to Jesus Christ this morning, if you can look to him this morning, the sin will draw, the problem will draw, and you enjoy the life of God. Come unto me. You have labored more. We have worked more, nothing to suffer for you here. But if you come to Jesus Christ this morning, if you behold the Lamb of God this morning, it is the ministry of the Lamb that will set you free, that will deliver you. Come to Jesus this morning, and it will set you free. The world has one major problem. is the problem of sin. But then, God has given one major solution. One real solution. One real solution. Adequate solution. That solution is Jesus Christ. Is the Lamb of God. That taketh away the sin of the world. Christ came to the world to save sinners from sin. You can read that in many areas. You have sin in your life. That was what Jesus Christ came to do. In Romans chapter 1, in verse 28. There are sins in your life. Sin that are tormenting you. You are saying you will not fight again, you are fighting. You are saying you will not beat your wife again, you are beating your wife. You are saying you will not steal again, you are stealing. Even here, you are stealing other people's money. Christ has come to deliver you. Christ has come to set you free. Romans chapter 1, verse 28. The Bible says, and even. As they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. That's your problem. You don't want to hear about God, but thank God. You are here. God, have, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. To do those things which are not convenient. Be filled with all unrighteousness. Tell me lies. Tell me lies. Which school are you attending? Even when you are attending secondary school, you say, I am in the university. That's a lie. If, a lie, if you die like that, suppose you, you are going along the road and motor knock you down, you open your eyes in hell. You have girlfriend. You have boyfriend. You have sugar daddies. Or you have sugar mommy. Whatever name they call it. If you die in that position, you go to hell. It doesn't really matter. Some people say because, you know, I'm a worker. Who is a worker? A sinner. A worker, a sinning worker, we go to hell. You need to repent this morning and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. They are filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, confessiousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, manigality, whisperer. They are backbiters. They are backbiters. Did you know what brother said? So, so, so did. You have what Sister A did, that is backbiting. Backbiting, haters of God, they hate God. They don't just like God, they hate God. Do you tell me you don't hate God? When you are misusing that game, you hate God, of course. Let us. Do you tell me you don't hate God? When you are having, uh, when you are having something, fam familiarity, you are having something with that lady, you hate God. Although you don't hate God, you hate God. Know today that you are one of the greatest enemies of God. And if you refuse to get born again, then you die and see, you go to hell. After all, every day, almost every week on the campus, there are obituaries. You don't know. Maybe you're always the next one. Why don't you change today? Why don't you change today and come to the Lord Jesus Christ and love this God of heaven? He has done much for you. You must come to Jesus and love this Lord. These people are despiteful. They are proud. They are boastful. They are inventors of evil. Evil thing, disobedient to parents. They are disobedient to parents. If you are in that category, why don't you come this morning? A lot of sin in your life. Stealing is there. Fornication is there. Lying is there. And many other sins. If you continue that way, you can't get to heaven. But Christ has come to deliver from the shackles of sin. He has come to secure man for heaven. Being aware of what the gospel will take and that the gospel is the solution to the world's problem Christ Jesus died for sin gospel is the solution to the world's problem name me social problem political problem or any other problem in life the gospel is the solution I come to the realization of that that with the gospel the world will prosper but without the gospel the world cannot prosper the gospel is the solution and that is why Jesus Christ gave everything necessary to preach and propagate the gospel so the lives of people can be changed. To save sinners, Christ left his glory in heaven. He came down to this world. 
He tried this wilderness of this world. And what did happen? He took upon him the form of a serpent. He loved the unloving. He died for the unworthy. He was betrayed. He was beaten. He was berated. He was bewitched. Then he was crucified. Jesus did all for you. I gave my life for you. What would that give for me? Jesus Christ gave everything so that you can be born again. How many references? To refer you to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Many, many references. But look at one. John chapter 15, verse 13. John 15, verse 13. Jesus Christ gave everything for you so that you can be born again. Greater Lord. Have no man than they that a man laid down his life for his friend. No greater law. No other greater law. He laid down his life for his friend. My mother may not, cannot do that. My father cannot do that. And nobody can do that. But Jesus Christ gave his life a ransom for sin. So that he can save man from sin in Galatians. Chapter 1, verse 4. Galatians, chapter 1, verse 4. You see what Jesus Christ had done. Because of you, because of me, who gave himself our sins. That he might deliver all from the pres this present world. According to the will of God, our Father, he gave himself for all. He died for all, so that we can be saved from sin. Don't you know, if Christ had done all these things, that God would definitely punish the ingrates. Those that will never be grateful. Jesus died for them, they, they, they wink at it, they don't care. What, what concerns me about Christ? If they say that, and they say it on the day down, of course, they will go to hell fire. Christ prayed the gospel. He commanded the disciples to preach the gospel. And that's why I'm preaching to you this morning. You need to come to Jesus Christ. Man needs to appreciate the love of Christ by yielding his life to him in true repentance. That leads me to my third point. Man's response to the Lamb's sacrifice. Man's response to the Lamb's sacrifice in John chapter 1. John chapter 1 in verse 36. John chapter 1 in verse 36. And looking upon Jesus. As he walked, he see, behold the Lamb of God. That is a call. Behold the Lamb of God. This is the demand that can save from sin. Behold the Lamb of God. Verse 37. And the two disciples had him speak and they followed Jesus. It will happen this morning. The disciples had that. Behold the Lamb of God. They understood the message of John. And they, they followed Jesus Christ immediately. Behold the Lamb of God. You yourself open your eyes wide and behold the Lamb of God. And you can behold him this morning. You are going to get born again in Matthew chapter 4. People are this world. They were wise. They followed the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray you will not be foolish. I pray that this morning you will be wise to follow the Lord. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, what did the people do? And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee. Saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew's brother casting a net into the sea. For they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straight away left their net and followed him. What is your own net? That girlfriend. What's your own net? That academic. What's your own net? That woman friend. What's your own net? That's who got daddy. Leave it this morning and follow Jesus Christ. You have nothing to lose by following Christ. But you have all the, the whole world to lose if you don't follow Christ. But for what a man gave. As a compare, as a, 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 a as a something for a soul, he will gain the whole one and lose his own soul. Have you ever seen somebody that when he died, they carry all his money? When he died, he was holding money before he died. When he died, he still he was holding the money. No, it doesn't. It's not, it, it's not like that because the Bible says we brought nothing to this world and we are not going to carry anything out. Don't be foolish. Like other people, come to cry this morning. Surrender your life to cry this morning. Sarkis was wise. Sarkis looked for Jesus Christ. Sargos sought Jesus Christ to see him where he climbed the sycamore tree and he saw Jesus Christ and he called on Jesus Christ have mercy upon my soul and Jesus Christ saw him and he told him to come, come down because today I will launch in now be like Zacchaeus look for Jesus Christ see Jesus Christ, pray to the Lord Jesus Christ and let the Lord save you this morning remember these Pharisees and the publican remember that the Pharisees pray. And the Pharisee refused to pray. He said, I pray tight. I do this. I do that. I'm beautiful. I'm awesome. But the publican, he said, have mercy upon me. I am a terrible sinner. What happened? Jesus Christ said that that man went back to his house better and more justified than this Pharisee who will never seek repentance. Don't be a Pharisee this morning. Be the publican this morning. Come to Jesus Christ just as I am without one plea. I am a sinner, terrible sinner. And I come, I come along. Save my life. Loneliness of life. Is a prerequisite to salvation. 
A proud man can never be saved. Can never be saved. A proud man can never be saved. A person that always capitalizes on his a, 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 a handsomeness or a beauty, prosperity, position in the society can never be saved. Also, a self-righteous person can never secure Christ's saving grace. For no man can be saved through his good work and moral life. Today, look for the Savior and think to change. Man must humble himself before God to be saved. He must accept that he is a sinner doomed for hell without the help of the Savior. He must confess his sin. He must repent and forsake them. And as I said, without condition, Christ as Lord and Savior. Because some people will say, if Christ can make me to pass my academy, if I can practice my project, if I get A, I will serve God. If you give that condition, you never be born again. Don't allow you to pass. So that he can ruin you in hell. Don't you know? If you go to hell, you meet the devil there. The devil has been standing against your salvation. That's why you have not been born again. But today, if you can pluck yourself out of the hand of the devil and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, receive him. He will receive you. In 1 John chapter, chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. I will read from verse 6. 1 John chapter 1. From verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. So called Christian. You say you are born again, and you are not doing the right thing. You are not walking in the truth. The Bible says you are walking in darkness, and you are not walking in the truth. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ is so, cleanses us from all sin. That's wonderful. The blood of Jesus Christ is so, and that lamb of Calvary cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not enough. They say, no, I'm not a sinner. That I'm, I'm a moralist. Every moralist is a sinner. Because at any point in life, he's going to goof. He's going to make mistakes. He's going to run, uh, run into error. And that is why you need to come to Jesus Christ. If you say, I, I, I don't have sin, then your sin will remain. Because the children of Christ say they see Jesus Christ said, yet they remain in their darkness. But today, if you come to Christ Jesus, is going to save you. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and God to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Here you are this morning. If you can confess those sins to God, God, I'm like this. God is my sin. God is my problem. Oh God, I come to the Lord. God is righteous. God will not forsake you. God will tell you and God will welcome you home. But if you forsake him, you are going to see Terrible things in there. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. Proverbs 28, in verse 13. The Bible says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsake them shall have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. We take it away the sins of the world. This money is your own money. You can get born again today. I did that one in 1980, many years ago. I came to the Lord Jesus Christ, and since that time, things have changed for my life. If this morning you can behold the Lamb, if this morning you can say, God, I call, without one plea. Oh, God, accept me, and God will accept you. Can you rise up now and start to pray? Can you rise up now and start to tell God about your life? Can you rise up there now and start to minister to and tell God, God, I want to be born again. God, I want to be saved. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. We take out the way the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. We take out the way the sins of the world. If you can look at Jesus Christ this morning, you can look to him to the sacrifice and appreciate the love of God and the love of the Savior, you will be on the game. You will be saved. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Sinner. Sinner. Say now, behold the Lamb of God, and you will be saved. Those that are certain, they find Him. If you seek the Lord this morning, you will be saved. Are you praying? Is that the way you will pray? 
If I say you should claim blessing, you should claim A's in your academy. That the way you pray. That the way you pray. If I say you should claim what you want from God. That the way you pray. Don't you know that sinner will go to hell? All sinners. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. We take out the way the sins of the world. Believe I want you to pray. What of these inconsistencies in your life? Don't you want you to tell God about that? Behold the Lamb of God, we take out away the sins of the world. He is still taking away sin. He can still deliver. He can just be free. He can still deliver. If you pray today, God will receive you. If you are just saying you will not prosper, that is the word of the Bible. But if you confess those things to God this morning, if you forsake that, if you are not Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. Except you do that, my brethren. Except you do that, my friend, you can never be saved. Behold the Lamb of God. The blood is still flowing. If you reach forth to God today, you will be saved. Repent of your sins. Convert those sins to God now. Don't those sins are the fruit of the Lamb now. And tell the Lamb to wash you with no things which change. Oh, how wonderful. When you become children of God. Whatever be your grade, whatever be your grand, rank, Jesus is the same to all men. You can be born again. We get born again through the same way. Accept the way a sinner, where we are sinners, and we go away from sin. We confess that they repent of them, and we offer our life to Jesus Christ freely, no condition. Then we born again. Behold the Lamb of God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. So ever cover his sin shall not prosper. But he that confesseth it and forsaketh, not only confess, but forsaketh it, we have mercy. I have people here this morning that want to give their life to Jesus. There are many in number. If you are one of them, can you please raise up your hand now? If you are one of them, can you pray? please raise up your hand now? I want to pray and you will be delivered. Many people here this morning, many, many people in the family of decision. That is what the Lord is saying. If you are there, raise up your hand. I see some hands up. I want more hands. Yeah, I see some hands up. I, I want more hands. You know you are a sinner. Raise up your hand. This is the, is the time. You can fix your destiny now. You can fix your destiny now. Where you will be in an eternity. Raise up your hand. You know you are a sinner. Can you please take another step of faith? Can you come forward? Can you come forward now? Come forward. Come to the front of the auditorium where you are. Come to the front of the hall where you are now. Can you be coming out? And I know if you are a sincere man, you come out. You not expect any else to come and push you before you come out. You want to give your life to Jesus, can you be coming out? I see some people coming out, God bless you. Can you come out now, be running out, be rushing out, be running and be praying? Thank you, God bless you. I see some people coming. There are many people there. Many, many. The Lord is telling me, I'm in the final decision. And you must be born again today. You must be born again. This is the time. You can fix your destiny now. You can give your life to Jesus Christ now. I see people coming now. I have many, many people here that want to give their life to Jesus Christ. I thank God for that. You can come out now. The associate coordinators, region coordinators, all of them. Men and women, they must come out to them to cancel these people. To cancel these people. It is a harvest of soul. Jesus Christ saving this body is the same wonderful Jesus. He will say, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Lord, the Lamb of God will take out away the sins of the world. If today you come to Christ, you will be saved. I saw many people coming out. Many, many people are coming. You are there. Come out. Once you die in your sin, Jesus pay the price of sin. You must come out and accept the Savior. People are coming out. As you say, coordinators, zona coordinators, safe coordinator, women, amen. They must come out to cancel these people. Many people are here. They want to be born again. They want to be born again. Many, many are in the family of this church this morning. They are making up their mind to serve Christ. You must come out there. If you are still there, hang if you are still there, hide it. Why don't you come out? The Lord knows you. In Jesus' name we pray. He that covered his sin will not prosper. But he that confesses a day and forsakes a day will have mercy. Jesus is the Lamb of God. He died for the sins of the world. If you come out there, you will be saved this morning. Those who come out, you have to pray. Confess your sins to God. Repent of those sins. Tell God I'm sorry. Tell God I'm sorry. I want to become a child of God. Make up your mind. It's not impossible. You are made up. You have, you have done this thing for some time before. But make up your mind now. God will receive you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's pray together now. Mighty Father, we thank you. We worship you because of these people that have come to you. They want to be born again. Father, mask it as you have repented of their sins. Go, I pray you forgive them in Jesus' name. Oh God, I pray by the blood of the Lamb Jesus. I'm masking that go. That blood will fail for them. And cleanse them away from their sins right now. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you give them power to go and sin no more. Thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.